Hello, my dear viewers of Dr. BMS, and welcome to today's edition. Today, I would like to talk to parents, and I would like to talk to parents of teenage children and children who are below the teenage years. At the Fountain of Hope Treatment Center, we receive teenagers who come in, young adults who come in with mental health problems, psychological problems, some of them with drug abuse problems, and they come in for assessment, for treatment. And after our assessments, we determine that some of these young people are going through mental health problems, addiction problems, because there was a problem with their parenting right from the beginning. And this problem of parenting is what has led them to reach this stage they are in at the addiction treatment center. So I want to call this misplaced parenting ideology. And this is what I would like to talk to you parents about in today's video. And so I would like to start by asking you some questions. Are you a parent, for example, who believes that the firstborn child must be first in everything and they must come ahead of the second born, third born child in all life events, be it schooling, be it marriage, be it career development, wealth acquisition, all those things that people go through so that if the firstborn child is lacking behind the second or third born child, then you become very restless and you go to an extent where you would like even to slow the second born child, the third born child, to wait for the first born child. You cannot get married in front of your elder sister. You cannot build a house in front of, before your elder brother. When in reality, this elder brother or elder sister is nowhere near getting married or building a house, but you would rather everyone in the family holds and waits until the firstborn comes first. Are you a parent, for example, who believes that the boy child is more important to the family than the girl child? And so you give a due preference to your sons, and leave your daughters in one sometimes, even when your daughters may be showing more promise in school, in personal development, in career, and you have this son who is not doing well, not putting in effort, but you focus all your energy or most of your energy on this son because, or these sons, because you believe sons are more important than the girls or daughters in the family. Are you a parent who believes that children should be a replica of yourself? And so what they choose to be in life, what they do, how they look, who they interact with must reflect your preferences from the beginning to the end. So you want to dictate how they choose their career, how they choose their friends, how they choose their stations in life, how they choose their daily routines, because they are a replica of you in your mind. Are you a parent who believes that a particular child is weak or vulnerable in some way, and it is your responsibility to protect this child and shield this child perpetually so that they do not get to fall victim from their weakness. 
So for example, you gave birth to a child and when they were young, they suffered some illness. And so you perpetually say, you know, this son of mine, this daughter, when they were young, they suffered from measles and they were very sick for almost a month. They were in hospital, I thought they were going to die and he has always been weak from them. So this child now is shielded perpetually. They cannot be allowed to venture out and do anything. And whatever they do, you have an explanation which borders around that kind of hereditary weakness that they have. These are examples I'm citing of parenting ideology, which we parents sometimes can have and perpetuate in a family and they start causing problems for these children in question or all the children in the family because the ideology is out of tune with the world we live in today and it is going to cause problems for the children. So I call this underparenting or overparenting. And this underparenting or overparenting manifests on a day to day basis through various ways. Some of the commonest are parents who want to apologize and appease to their children unnecessarily. So we take an example. It is your child's birthday. And in the neighborhood, other boys or girls of their age, some of them, when it was their ninth birthday, they were bought a bicycle. And so your son's birthday is coming. And you cannot afford a bicycle because your means cannot allow that. But instead of explaining that you cannot afford a bicycle, you will buy this child another toy, maybe new clothes. You are apologizing. It's like you've made a grave mistake not to buy this bicycle. You're apologizing to this child and you're trying to appease them, asking them, what can I buy you now? Or if I buy you a new clothes, will you be happy? Please don't be annoyed. So instead of explaining, you are apologizing and appeasing this child. And in the process, you are conditioning this child's mind to start seeing that whatever they want in life, they should get. Or if they don't get, someone should be apologizing. Are you, for example, a parent who <coughs> allows, excuse me, allows children into adult environment before their time? You take your child to the club, to the bar, adult members club, where the themes of discussion are seriously adult and your child is there listening, sometimes partaking in. Or even at home, you welcome your friends, neighbors who come in and the theme of discussion in your own sitting room, in your own yard, is fairly adult and your child is there. So there is this high school friend who has visited you and you've not been together for some time and they have come. Now you start chatting and within a short time the discussion drifts to the point that there is a marital problem between your friend and their spouse. So they are here telling you how the husband is bad, is mistreating them, their child is, their wife is bad, is doing this, and the child is sitting there, right there, listening. You are exposing this child to adult environments and adult themes, and you are conditioning this child's mind to start assessing things with an adult bias, which they are not ready for. Are you a parent, for example, who wants to give everything to your child? You have indulged your child. Everything they want, they get. And you are going out all the time to please this child and oversupplying them so that they should not lack anything, so that they should not look like they are missing on anything or they are not loved because they are not being provided for. Are you a parent who 
shares adult information with your child. So as you bring in your child in this adult environment that I described and you are talking, sometimes you let this child in on information that is not appropriate for their age. You are having a problem with the child's father, the child's mother. You are having problems with your in-laws. You are having problems with your neighbors and you do not like that neighbor of yours, but you are sharing this information with your child or in front of your child. In the process, you are conditioning your child's mind in a way that is inappropriate for their age. If they leave the house, your home, the next day, they're likely to say a bad word, to make a comment that is insulting to the neighbor because they heard their mother or their father say the same thing about the neighbor yesterday. You're called to school by the teachers and your child has been in some trouble or they have been punished. And the child comes home and says, I was punished yesterday for this. You storm the school, you confront the teachers in front of the child and you're giving the teachers your peace of mind. Instead of asking for a private meeting with the teachers to discuss these issues, to get to understand away from your child, you're doing it in front of your children. So in the process, knowingly or unknowingly, you are sharing information, opinions, biases that are not of that child with the child and they're not age appropriate with the child. They will inherit this and go forward with them, sometimes with undesirable consequences to their mental health and their overall behavior. Some parents overdelegate their responsibilities to the helpers, the maid, the house girl, or that relative who has come to live in with you and is helping you with babysitting responsibilities. Now, this is a person who is looking after this child in all ways. They clothe them, they feed them, they clean them, they do their homework with them, they play with them. And you have become a parent who is in a way sterile. You don't touch your child. You just express what you wish done through the house guard. That over delegation, while it takes away some of the pressures of parenting from you, but it also makes that child to start assimilating opinions, teachings, mannerisms, behaviors of that helper or those groups of helpers more than you, the parent. And if these mannerisms, assimilations are not what you wish for, then you are in for a shock when this child starts playing mannerisms that you do not understand because they came from those people you are over delegating parenting responsibilities to. Some parents show excessive control of their children. The environment around the child is excessively controlled. Where they go, who they play with, what they do on a minute to minute basis is heavily controlled. And this is because the parent is afraid, you are fear the child will fall and injure themselves. They'll go out and get into mud and get dirty. They'll be rained on and they'll get pneumonia. You have all this set of fears which are making your child unable to grow as a normal child. Remember all young animals, be it a puppy, be it a kitten, a chick, if you observe them, you will see that as they are born and they start growing up, they are playful and experimenting. They want to discover the environment around them. That is the nature of growing up as a young animal. And so if you curtail this freedom of your child to play with the neighbor's children, to jump around with a bicycle, run around, sometimes fall, get up, get, come home dirty, you are causing this child to have difficulty in associating with the environment associating with their peers other human beings and this may have an undesired consequence of the mental health these consequences that then start to show as the child starts to enter their teenage years and 
they mainly show as children who are maladjusted within the family or the community. Most of such children start being entitled children, children who are unfeeling and hedonistic yet entitled. Entitled means that this child has grown up in an environment where everything is provided for them. Their whims are met unquestioningly and they have grown to know that everything they want must be given to them. If it's not given to them, profuse apologies must be made. So these are children who are entitled and they are unfeeling because they don't think about the pain other people go through to give them what they want. All they care about is just getting what they want. And if they do not get what they want, they will throw a tantrum, they will kick a storm, they will be abusive to people around them, and they are generally just unruly children because they have not been taught to be responsible that if you want to get something, you must give something. They are net receivers and they don't put any effort in it. There are also children then who turn out to be hedonistic. They exist for pleasure, for just having a good time. They don't break a sweat. They don't feel any pain for anything. Theirs is just to enjoy life, be it at home or away from home. Theirs is to enjoy life and mommy and daddy is going to provide for this life. And there's no question about missing anything as long as mommy and daddy is there. So whenever they need something, they lack something, they are denied something, they will come home and they are complaining, reporting to mommy, be it at school, they have been punished for not doing their homework or they behaved in, mis inappropriately with the other children in school and they were pre reprimanded, they will come home and they are complaining to the parents because they feel entitled and they feel they are always right, they are always heroes, they can always only be praised and they cannot be reprimanded or punished anything. They should be rewarded all the time. You are bringing up children with a hedonistic tendency and such children slowly progress to be antisocial children, having an antisocial personality because they don't care about other people. They have less empathy and almost always these children start abusing drugs because they have, they have a lot of free time. They have a lot of time with nothing to do. Whatever they need, mommy and daddy will provide. And so naturally, they look to fill in their free time with some fun, with something exciting out of the ordinary. And usually alcohol, marijuana, other drugs of addiction come in to fill this void. So they sink into drug abuse, other antisocial behavior, mental health problem, or some of them, if they don't get into abusing of drugs, they become very conflicted as they enter their teenage years because they can see their peers who are brought up in different environments seeming more stable. They are able to get by challenges, to deal with upsets, and themselves, when they look at them, themselves they see that they are not able to do this thing as good as their friends in school and college. And they wonder, why am I not able to do these things like my friend is able to do with ease? So this conflict causes psychological problems, depression, and other mental health problems, which sometimes lead these patients to our center for treatment. On the other side, on the flip side, Parents who are bringing up their children on an ideology that is not right will almost always become codependent parents. And this means that these are parents who become addicted to their children. While their children are going into bad behavior, getting into mental health problems, the parents are getting more and more addicted to this child because this is these are parents who have made their children the center of their universe everything they do is for their child and they are out to make their children have whatever they need never lack on anything 
So they spend their working day and their sleeping hours thinking about how to pamper their children. And this is why they have this ideology that I don't want my child to suffer like I did. I can do anything for my children. You are the, my king. They give them names, mommy, daddy, and they in the process become slaves of their children. They are addicted to their children as their children are drifting away into antisocial behavior, drug abuse, or getting conflicted about their role as human beings in the human society. So this is a situation that develops and by the time the children come into a rehabilitation center or they see mental health problem, it is almost too late to do anything about it. The best way then to prevent this as parents, and that's why we are having this discussion today, is to prevent this bad parenting from happening by practicing good parenting practices. And these practices start first and foremost by you as parents developing domestic principles that will guide your parenting. Right from the first child, the child is still young, a few weeks old, a year old, sit down with your husband, with your wife, and discuss how you'd want to bring this child. Develop principles that guide you throughout your parenting stage. These domestic principles can only be developed if you are there to do them develop them. I'm talking about you being a parent who is present, not absent. Your presence will help you to see what is happening, to evaluate, to adjust, and to refine the principles that will guide you along the way. Because if you're not there to do what you're supposed to do, the vacuum you leave also communicates or shows some things which children will pick because by their nature children learn by observation and copying mimicking not only human children but all young animals so you need to be present to be a good royal model and exercise those principles that you have developed and refined over time as you exercise those principles, some things I would like to point out clearly that, as I said, do not be a parent who apologizes and appeases your children unnecessarily. Instead, seek to explain things to your children, especially where you find difficulties or you feel meeting some of their needs, their demands, is not appropriate or you are not able to do that. Explain to your child why you cannot buy them a bicycle for their birthday present. Tell them you do not have the means to buy a bicycle. Their friend from the neighboring house may have had a bicycle bought for them because their parents could afford. But for you, you cannot afford because you use the money to take a younger sibling to hospital last week when they were sick. So you will explain and do not add an apology. Do not appease by offering an alternative present as an appeasement. Instead, give an explanation that I cannot buy you a bicycle now because I cannot afford, but I'll buy you a new jacket. That's what I can afford. That is explaining. That's not apologizing. That's not appeasing. As parents, do not admit children to adult environments. This one is a no-no. Make a distinction. When you go out to adult environments, you're going to a club, you're going to a bar, you're going to a members-only activity, adult members-only activity. Leave your children behind at home or in a safe space and go out with 
fellow adults, partake in your adult discussions, adult fun, and come back to join your children. Do not take children to the pub and expect that they sit there taking a soda as you take your beer and dancing suggestively to whatever music that they are having their fun as well. No, they are copying you. They are seeing what you are doing and they will start internalizing in their mind that it's all right to do those things. And when they reach their teenage years, they are going to start experimenting with these things very early and sometimes with disastrous consequences like drug addiction, alcohol addiction, which we've talked about. Do not allow your children to get away with breaking rules doing things that are against the principles that you have set, and you cannot exercise discipline on them. Set the principles, but follow through by being present, not absent, and where you see a deviation, discipline so that they come back to life. When I talk about discipline, I do not mean punishment only. Punishment is just part of it. Discipline goes beyond punishment. Sometimes it just requires that you give the correct information. You correct this child and tell them, don't do this. I expect you to do the other things and I'll not allow you to do ABCD without raising a hand to slap the child or a stroke to cane that child you are enforcing discipline because you are requiring that rules be adhered to and you are present to ensure that they are adhered to. As you enforce this discipline and you are present in the child's life, guiding them with the rules and principles you have set as a family, do not be afraid to say no. As I said, do not apologize and appease your children for things that you are unable to do. Instead, explain to them. And in this explanation, sometimes you may just say, no, it is not possible to do A, B, C, D. Your child wants to go out for a sleepover and you are not sure that the house, the home they want to go to, the environment they want to go to, they'll be sufficiently supervise so that they do not get into mischief. You are right to just say, no, I'll not allow you to go for that sleepover. Do not consider saying no to a child's request, wish as a sign of not loving that child. Because when you do that, then you get into overindulgence that I talked about. As a parent, Talk to children about the things that are relevant to their age. Allow children into conversations that are relevant to their age. As I said earlier, do not take children to environments that are not appropriate for them. So don't take them to the clubs, leave them at home. But even at home, when you have a theme a discussion, a meeting where adult issues are being discussed, do not let your children in. So, for example, you are at home and your neighbor, your high school friend comes to visit. So you are happy chatting in the sitting room and your discussion slowly goes to the home situation of your friend. Maybe they are having some marital problems and now they are telling you how they are having difficulty with their husband, with their wife, and your child is there. You have let this child into an adult discussion, which you should not. Call this friend of yours, step aside, go to the veranda, go to the courtyard, take a walk around the estate discuss these things when your children are not there. Leave your children in the sitting room to watch television. Go to a side room with your friend. 
and discuss these adult themes without involving the children. Because when you discuss and the children are there and your friend is telling you how their husband is bad and men are bad and women do this and that, then you are letting this child develop biases, prejudices, opinions that are not their own. And again, it's not their time. And this will harm their mental age and their mental development at a later stage. You have been called to school. There's a problem with your child at school and you feel the teachers are at fault. Go into a private meeting with the teacher. Let the child be outside. Discuss with the teacher and agree on things. Even if you don't agree, disagree in private. Don't let your child in on such discussion because the theme is not right for that child. Your child has done well in school, at home, they have performed well, and you feel you want to buy them a present. Parents, let us give presents that are appropriate for the effort. I don't want to prescribe any present you can give your child, but ask yourself, if your child has done well in class eight exam, and you feel happy, fulfilled as parent. Is this the time to allow an under a child to drive a car or buy them a car? Allow them to go out and party just because they have done well in school? Is that reward appropriate for that effort, for that age? Ask yourself. Because they'll grow to be a year, two years, more years older, and there will be another opportunity for you to give that reward. So why don't you grade this reward? Give this reward that is appropriate for their age and their achievement so that you leave allowance for a bigger reward next time they do something bigger. But if you start with the biggest reward, what are you going to do next time they do something? You can't repeat what you did last time. It will not be good for the child. And so you are forced to go higher and higher. And as you go higher and higher, you create expectations which may be inappropriate and which may be not good for you and you're not able to afford those expectations that you have created. So allow your child to grow in stages. As they grow, they get what's appropriate for them. During these stages of growth, give space for your child to do what is called self-discovery. Do not be overprotective. Do not micromanage the environment around the child so that a child cannot play, cannot interact with other children in the neighborhood. They are not able to learn the social skills that are required when they're interacting with other children because they will grow up to be a social human being. They will grow up to be human beings who feel handicapped, how to deal with others, how to feel emotions of happiness and happiness to express themselves in front of the others. And this is the precursor of the mental health, psychological problems that we see sometimes uh, manifesting in the people who are brought in our centers. So, you as a parent then the net message is that you need to create a balance between what you can do and what you cannot do how much you can do and at what stage you're supposed to do it so you know this parent who just comes and releases everything at once all the love at once you can't hold back anything all the control at once you cannot allow the child freedom to learn some things on their own because you will be creating a situation where you're bringing up a child with maladjusted standard and it is good from time to time to benchmark with other parents create linkages so that you are not this parent who does not know your child's friends the families from which their friends come, what happens in those other homes, so that if a bicycle was bought 
in the other home for a birthday present, it's good to know what kind of family is that. And this will help you to explain that perhaps that family is well to do more than we as a family are. And that's why they're able to afford. And if you see that the relationship, the influence that the, your child gets from the friendship with the child from that family is helpful, you help this child to deepen this relationship, this friendship, so that they learn more. But if on the converse, it is a relationship that is not helpful for the mental growth, behavioral development of this child, then you have time to adjust and steer your child away from that influence. While doing all this, remember that you cannot create a utopian environment for a child where they feel no pain, they are always just laughing and having a good time because it's not real. Some pain is good pain. A child learning how to ride a bicycle and falling, hurting themselves, it just helps them to be more careful. All it requires is that you protect this child from those harms that can destroy them and their growth. But the lessons of life cannot be impacted. They cannot be learned with, without some pain. And this is what we as parents need to learn so that we do not become overprotective. In the net of things, the summary of things about parenting, good parenting then is a combination of your presence as a parent, knowing what is happening in your child's life, being there, and making decisions about your child's growth and development that are balanced. They are not leaning too much on the happy side not leaning too much on the unhappy side, they are balanced and they are timely so that at every stage of development, you apply a decision. You allow this child into a theme, into an environment, into a knowledge that is appropriate for them as they grow. When you do that and your child grows and they reach the teenage years, they are progressing to adulthood. You can sit back and say, I did my best. And you can let go this child into adulthood and independence with satisfaction. Not because you brought up a model child, but because you did your best as a parent you did the right thing every parent does and you set the child your child on a balanced path where they are able to go and make adult choices for themselves without you being blamed as having not enabled them to be good parents thank you very much and I hope to see you again in the next video. Bye-bye.